Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. So I get lots of emails from my viewers and for that I want to thank you so much. I get lots of really, really great questions and comments. And one of the comments that I've been getting a lot lately is, can I do a Kelly's Favorites video? And can I do a Kelly's Favorites on my website? So I'm about to put all of these 10 of my top favorite things on my website and there's going to be a link that you can go to and it will take you directly to the things that I like to use the most. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to explain what they are and how you use them. And so I hope this helps a little bit because I know there's so many different products that you can use. And trust me, I've tried most of them out there. So I've picked my favorite ones. These are my tried and true, the ones that I use all the time. And they're just really great quality. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is the elasticity. Now there's many different types and I know everybody has their favorites, but for me, the Beetalon elasticity is my favorite. Sorry about the crappy front. I couldn't find one at home here that didn't have a, a banged up sort of front on it. Um, I just, I like this one because it has a really good um, sort of lasting power. Some of the other ones just seem to fall apart very quickly. Um, I just find it to be the best quality. And you know, the, the old saying is you get what you pay for. Well, that's kind of how it is in most jewelry things. So I don't find this particularly expensive, but it's definitely not as cheap as the stuff you could buy, say like at the dollar store, but then that stuff is crap. So that, that's the difference when you buy something that's really, really inexpensive is it's just not gonna last. So if I'm looking at sizes, there's a couple different sizes that you can get in your elastic. There's 0.5, there's 0.8, and there's one. Now people always ask me, well, which one is your favorite? So I tend to go for the 0.8. That tends to fit through most beads easily, and it kind of has the you know nice strong um, size that we're looking for. 0.5 I tend to use more on things like pearls or anything with a small drill hole, or if it's just a really delicate kind of bracelet. And for the one uh, millimeter, I actually hardly ever use that. But if I do use it, I will uh, use it for things like heavy coral and turquoise and that sort of stuff. So now I've just cut off a small piece to show you what it looks like. The nice thing about this is it tends not to yellow too, where a lot of the other ones I have found that they will yellow over time, but this one doesn't seem to. So the first thing you wanna make sure when you do cut off a piece of a, your elasticity is that you give it a pre-stretch. So you'll see it's you know about this size. So what I do is I come in and I just start pulling on it. So I give it a pretty good tug. And the reason I'm doing this is you need to pre-stretch it so that your bracelet or whatever you're making doesn't sag. So give that a good stretch. I kind of just keep going down the whole length of it until it's stretched out. And that probably added probably a third more to the length of it. So that will make it a whole lot easier to tie because it's already pre-stretched and then your bracelet won't sag on you. So if you're struggling, like I used to, because whenever I used to use the elastic, I used to just scream at it and say, I can't do this. And it wasn't until I saw somebody stretch it and I thought, oh, that's the difference. So make sure you pre-stretch it and choose the right size. And most often it's gonna be the 0.8. The next one of my favorite items is of course Softlex. You'll see me using that on a lot of my videos. I tend to stick to the medium. There are uh, three, I think there's three different sizes. There might be four, there might be like a super fine, but in my store I carry fine, medium, and heavy. And I tend to use the medium just in the same way that I use for the elastic. So I tend to use the fine if I'm working with pearls or really delicate things. Medium is sort of my go-to for probably 98% of what I make. And then the heavy is more for things like corals and turquoise, anything super heavy. You can't beat Softlex. It is bendable and flexible, and you can actually even tie it in a knot. Um, if you ever wanna have some really good tips and tricks on this, you can just uh, watch Sarah that works for uh, Softlex. She's really great at explaining all the millions of different things that you can do, but you see how you can even tie a knot into it? Um, some of the cheaper ones, you'll find that if you even just give it a little tiny bend like that, it'll leave a big bend in it. And you'll see that kink in your jewelry. So I tend to use something a little better quality and then you don't have that happen. 
So one of the other reasons I do love to use Softlex is that you'll find that it doesn't sort of shred. Some of the cheaper quality ones tend to shred quite a bit, where this one is actually 49 strands. So somehow they managed to get 49 strands of their wire in there and bind it all together. So you'll end up with something that's super strong, easy to use, it's gonna last forever and you just cannot go wrong. So the next item that I like to use a lot is Fireline. Now there's so many different stringing materials and I've mentioned before in some of my previous videos that I am not a seed beater. So if you are a seed beater, you're probably gonna have your favorite. There's all sorts of different things and I honestly don't even know all the names of them, but there's many different types. In my store, we carry Nymo thread and we carry Fireline. We do carry Wildfire, although we're going out of um, carrying that one because it's just not as popular. But there's so many different uh, brands that you can carry but i tend to like the fire line and i almost always use the smoke now in my store we carry the six pound we have a small spool that i think is 10 yards and then this one is the 50 yards there's also a crystal that we carry i do believe there's other colors now but i just carry the two if there is a downside to using fire line it's when you run this through your fingers you might end up with a little bit of the black on your fingers but you know it's just a little bit that comes off I do like Fireline because it's a little stiffer than some of the other things. It doesn't tend to fray as much and it just kind of works for many, many different things. So if you're not sure what kind of um, stringing product that you want to use for your different seed beading things, just try them all. I have used Nymo and I do like that one and I know it's very, very popular with our indigenous customers. That tends to be the thing that they use for all of their um, heavily beaded items. But for me, I just always went to Fireline. I have no idea why. I have no idea why I use the six pound. I guess I just heard that that was the size to use. So that's what I use in my store. So stick to Fireline and you can't go wrong. One of the other questions I get a lot is, well, what kind of wire do you like to use? So I just like this simple craft wire. This is, I believe, is a copper core. And yeah, you can see the copper on the end there. And then it's just got a plating on the outside. And this particular one I get from um, Beadsmith and it has uh, many different colors. I think I carry about seven or eight of the different colors in my store. And what I do like about this is that it's, uh, really really soft so you'll find that wires come in different tempers it might be either in um, dead soft like this one or it'll be half hard and I do think that you could probably find some hard wires although I don't know why you'd ever use those because they are very very hard I like the dead soft wires because they're just so much more malleable now one of the other things that I get uh, a question on a lot on the wires is well what's your go-to size so I tend to stick to the 22 gauge for most of the things that I'm making. Now you'll see in a lot of my videos because I like that sort of um, messy, heavy um, wrap that I will bump up to a 20 gauge because that gives you just a little bit more sort of oomph to your wire wrapping. If you're trying to figure out what size to use, you just sort of have to go with what you want for your project. So if I'm using um, a 26 gauge, that's gonna be super, super fine. And I'm gonna do that for things like crocheting with wire or maybe making something um, super delicate. If I'm trying to get through a really tiny drill hole on um, maybe want some of the Indian cut stones or on pearls. But uh, for most things, I'm gonna end up sticking around the 22 to 20 uh, gauge. You'll see me using 24 a lot in my projects when I want something a little finer. And I very seldom go up to an 18 or a 16 gauge. Those are meant for me. I use those mostly when I'm trying to create something um, like a wire form and then I'm going to maybe wrap around it. So if I was going to create a wire form, I would probably start with an 18 and then maybe hammer it and do whatever I'm going to do to it. And then if I'm going to be wrapping and embellishing with beads, I would probably bump up to a 24 or maybe a 26. So hopefully that's not too confusing. My go-to is always 22. I sometimes use 20 and I really love the dead soft wire. So another question that I get all the time is what glue should I use? Well, these are the four glues that I carry in my store. So they're very similar, but they're very different at the same time. So honestly, you can use almost any glue for anything you like, with the odd exception. So my go-to glue is GS Hypo Cement. I like it because it has this really fine needle on there. And you can see that right away, as soon as I pull the pin out, it started to come out of the tip there. So you don't even have to squeeze this. You can just let gravity do its thing and it'll start coming out. The hardest part of using this is getting that back in there. And if I can do this on camera, it'll be a miracle because I never can because of my lousy eyesight. Oh, look at that, I did it. <laughs> so, 
I tend to use GS Hypo for a lot of things. I'll use it on my leather. I'll use this one when I am um, insetting uh, crystal rivolis into a bezel. I will use this for almost everything. It even says on there, uh, pinpoint precision for jewelry beading, hobbies, uh, watches, crystals, optics, industrial applications. So this one is a really great affordable glue that I tend to use the most. Another one that I like to use is the E6000. This is another one that I like to use if I'm uh, insetting crystals into my Rivoli's. You never want to use something like these two glues if you're insetting into a Rivoli with a crystal of any kind because I'm not exactly sure what it is, but there's something in these um, super glues that have, there's a property in there that will make your crystals go cloudy. So if I was to drop some of that super new glue on top of a, say the crystal chiton chain or into a Rivoli, you might see that it will cloud over. So never use these glues in th those applications. This glue also works really great if you're going to say be gluing two things together, such as maybe I will have a, a metal pendant and then I want to maybe put a charm on top of it like a you know maybe some sort of little focal piece uh, gluing two uh, metal pieces together is great with E6000 the difference with these two is this one will cure a little faster this one I like to leave overnight now this one isn't like an instant dry or anything but this one definitely needs time to cure so that's another great one. And this is just a little mini baby tube and it's like $1.99 in the store. So this is a really great go-to glue. Now for the super new glue, I don't use this one very often, but what I do like to use this for is when I'm uh, working with leather. Now it does tend to make my leather swell up a little bit when you put it on there. So you have to be kind of fast when you're insetting it into whatever cord end you're gonna use. But if you want something that is like an instant dry, uh, that works really, really fast, this super new glue is great. So make sure that if you do use this super new glue that you don't get it on your fingers because it's kind of like that crazy glue that we used to use years ago. It's, it is a different property, but um, this one is a really great one for that instant connection that you want and it's fabulous on leather because it dries clear. Now when it does dry, it will have a bit more of a crystalline texture to it where this one is really sort of more viscous so it'll have a bit more of a rubbery sort of texture to it as will this one. So that's quite the, the difference with glues is you kind of have to look at the viscosity. Uh, I know that's kind of a weird word, but <laughs> it does mean a lot in glues. So this one will give you, you know, sort of a, a crystalline with a little bit of a rubbery texture. This one is way more rubbery. This is very crystalline. And then we have our Loctite Super Glue, which are kind of, to me, almost like a combination of all of them. Now this one is more like this one in that it is a super glue, but then it's got this sort of property in that it's got that sort of goopiness to it. So I love to use this one on my leather projects when I want sort of an instant bond. So you'll see me use this on the end of leather when I'm gonna put them into the cord ends and I don't wanna squish them, I just want to have something to grab it. I tend to use this one a lot. It has a really nice uh, tip on it that you can just um, easily get to where you want to go. And you just kind of just kind of squeeze it, just these sides, and it'll kind of come out the end. I don't want to do it and get it all over my mat. So really, when you are using glues, you kind of need different glues for different things. So it really depends on what application you're going to be using it for. Um, that's sort of my best advice. We do carry all four of these in the store, with this being our most popular one. Another thing I get asked all the time is which jump ring do I use for this project? Well, that is a huge question and there are a million different answers, but I'm going to kind of explain how I approach the whole jump ring thing. Let me grab a couple extra tools here so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this one is uh, probably a four millimeter and that one is a 21 gauge. So you can see when you open this one up, let me find the little the cut on there. When I open this one up, it's very lightweight. Like I can just open that. I could probably even open that with my fingers. Like it's just, there's not, of course I can't because my nails are a little longer right now. <laughs> so if you just kind of go back and forth, you can see that that one's very easy to open. I tend to only use a jump ring like this when I have a very small hole or if I need to kind of get it into a space that's a little bit smaller. It honestly is not one of my favorites because it does come apart quite easily. I mean, you give that one tug and it can kind of come apart. So I only use this for very specific applications. 
you'll see me use this size on almost all my projects. So this one is an 18 gauge four millimeter and I carry these in about six different colors. So this one is a really good strong one so it takes a little bit of effort to open it and to close it and you can actually hear that click. They're really good quality. So the 18 gauge means it's going to have a little bit more oomph to it. It's going to have a bit more width so it's going to hold up. Now I like these because they're strong and they're small. And one of my recommendations when I was always teaching my classes was to use the smallest, strongest jump ring that you can. And you'll find that your jewelry won't fall apart if you do that. When people come into the store and they show me a piece of jewelry that's kind of come apart, it's generally because they've used the wrong size of jump ring. So make sure that you use something that is the correct size. So I'll make sure to link all of these different jump rings, but this one is my favorite. This is the 18 gauge four millimeter. Now, one of the things about jump rings is that depending on the manufacturer, you're gonna have different sizing. So this one, as I just said, was 18 gauge four millimeter because it comes from one of my suppliers. It's where I get my chain from. So it's really good quality. They don't tarnish. There's no nickel, lead, cadmium, uh, and it's electroplated over brass. So they're naturally hypoallergenic. So they're a really great product. Now, you all know how much I love TierraCast. This is a TierraCast one, which is equally as good but they say that this one is a five millimeter because they're going on the inside diameter. So on this one, we have an outside measurement for our diameter, which is four millimeter. And then on this one, we have an inside diameter, which is five millimeter. So it can get a little bit confusing, but in the descriptions on my website, I always put outside diameter or inside diameter. So this is my second favorite one. This one is a 16 gauge five millimeter. So again, that one is the outside di diameter but uh, it is a nice strong one and it I like to double these up. I just find this one is like, these are literally my two favorites that I go to all the time. They're not exactly the same color, but I always say if anybody's that close to you that they can tell that those are different colors, then they're way too close to you. So I don't worry about that so much. Um, I just kind of like to use what I enjoy using. So those are my two favorite go-tos. Now, the other one that I like to use, this is also from Tierra Cast is an oval one. So now why would I use an oval jump ring? Well, sometimes you don't want the uh, cut to be on sort of the top. Now, if I was to be using this with Softlex or any other product, it would probably sit on either side there. So there would be no chance that it could pop through that cut. So sometimes I will use this because I need an oval shape. Maybe it fits in something a little bit better or it, the size of the uh, inside diameter works for my project. But often what I do is go to this because of where the cut is on the side there. So those are some of my favorite jump rings and some of the reasons why I use them. Now we get asked a lot about head pins. Now I tend to use this one the most. This is my uh, two inch 20 gauge balled up end. I really love how it finishes off. And these are just two little samples that I had sitting on my desk here at home. And I just love the way that that gives that just that little extra oomph on your jewelry. Now we do carry another one that's very similar, but it has a blunt end on that. And I like it, but it's a little bit stiffer. So I find it really hard to work with. So I tend not to use it very much. This one is kind of like the perfect length. It's the um, perfect width. It's nice and strong. This one's got a little more, you know, oomph to it. So I have to often use my tools when I'm uh, doing my wire wraps. So if you're looking for a really good quality head pin, these are exactly the same manufacturer as my smaller uh, jump rings. So there's no nickel, lead, cadmium, and they're uh, brass core with electroplating on top. So they're really, really good quality. They're never going to tarnish on, on you and they're not going to turn you all kind of goofy colors. So those are my favorite head pins. So another one of my favorite products are these two by two crimp tubes. Now there's so many different kind of crimps out there. And again, this is another one of those, you get what you pay for. So we sell these for $3 and 75 cents for a hundred. So you get a lot of them. And sometimes people have said, well, wow, that's kind of expensive. But I also had the ones that were $1.99 for a hundred, but they were just garbage. So I've actually stopped carrying them. These are great because they have a perfectly symmetrical wall. The other ones would often just kind of crunch when you'd go to use them, but these are nice and even, and they are a tube. There's also the kind that come in the round, like a round crimp, but I don't like those ones very much. So I find that these are just perfect. So whenever I'm you know, using my Softlex, I can get that in there and I know that I'm going to have a product that's gonna turn out nicely. 
So when I grab my crimping pliers, I know that if I have this tube on there, that I can easily go in there and I'm gonna get a perfect crimp every time. These don't break, they don't come apart, they don't you know, fall apart. You'll see sometimes on really cheap ones when you do that little crimp, the uh, silver plating will actually flake right off. But again, these ones are from the same manufacturer as my uh, jump rings and my head pins and my chain. So they're really good quality and you cannot go wrong with these. Now, if you've watched me for a while, you know that my favorite beads are check glass. I mean, I love all the semi-precious and I love, you know, I love all beads. But if you ask me my absolute favorite bead, it is always going to be a check glass bead. This one is an English cut. If you're looking for this particular one, this one is uh, CZ or CZ in Canada, <laughs> 102495 and it's an aqua blue platinum finish. Look at how beautiful those are. They're so intricate. And this English cut is really cool the way it's um, got so many different cuts on there. I just love them. So you'll see me use rondelles a lot. Those are the things that I like the most, but I just didn't happen to have any at home here. But with check glass, you cannot go wrong. They're made in such a beautiful way. They don't fade, they're long lasting. They are intricate, they're gorgeous. The colors they use and the color combinations and the coatings are just fabulous. So I'll make sure to put a link to my check glass page and then I'll do a link to the rondelles because those are really my favorites. But I think a close uh, runner up now are these English cuts. I've started carrying them and I absolutely love them. I think they're just beautiful. All right, and the last of my 10 favorite things, of course, has to be Tierra Cast. Now, they're not sponsoring me. They don't pay me for anything, but I always, they're really good to me though. <laughs> but I, I love Tierra Cast products. You literally cannot go wrong in any way, shape, or form when you use Tierra Cast. From their manufacturing process to their customer service to their cost and definitely to their designs. I mean, you just cannot get any better than Tierra Cast. I just love them. The detail on these is crazy. So this is a charm that I love to use. It has this side to it, which is beautifully embellished. And then you can flip it over and get a different, completely different look. This again is my absolute favorite button. I love how intricate it looks. Um, it's got such a gorgeous pattern on there. And then this lovely little heart. It's just so pretty and they're so, they've got like a lot of weight to them. Everything's just so nicely made. I don't think I've ever got a Tierra Cast product and I have ordered thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces over the years. I don't think I've ever received one that I've had to complain about because their products are just, just so good. This is another one of the teardrop ones that you can just, you know, you can wrap around it, you can dangle from it, you can just do a million things. So on my particular website, I will always denote when something is Tierra Cast in that I will put it in the description. And you'll often see codes that start with like a 94 or a 93, that sort of thing. So if you're wondering, well, how do I know on your website which one is a Tierra Cast product? It will always say Tierra Cast in the description. I can't link everything. I'm going to link these three things because they are three of my favorites but I can't link everything because there's so many hundreds of different Tierra Cast products. But if you buy these, you will pay a little tiny bit more than say the, the junky ones that you can get from China. But these are made in the US. They are not full of any garbagey, you know, metals that we don't know what's in them. There's no lead, there's no cadmium, none of the bad stuff that's going to bother your skin. And you will just absolutely love designing with them. Their holes are always consistent. Their shapes and sizes are always consistent. So. I, you just cannot go wrong with anything Tierra Cast. Yes, they are my favorite company. <laughs> I absolutely love them. So there you go. There's 10 of my favorite things that I love to use. I hope that this really helped break down some of the things that I like and why I like to use them. And as I mentioned before, I will link those in my website. You'll see at the top of my website, there's a little banner and it has different links on it. And I'm gonna put Kelly's picks or Kelly's favorites. I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna put on there. But if you click on that, you'll, it'll take you to all my favorite things and it should make shopping for them just a little bit easier. So as always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, tell me which one is your favorite and if you've used any of these, if you love it. And please make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel that you do. I have a goal this year and my goal is to get to 100,000 subscribers. I'm at just over 80,000 now, which I can't believe 80,000 people out there like my channel. But my goal this year is to hit 100,000 subscribers. 
So if you're on a device where, like say if you're on your TV, you can't seem to uh, give anything like a like or a subscribe on there. So can you switch over to your phone or to your desktop and subscribe to my channel? It would really mean the world to me. So I wanna get my channel out to as many people as possible because I do think that I give some valuable information on making jewelry easy and fun to create. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.